Hey everyone, this is Nick and welcome to your weekly dose of Linux and open source news. This week we have Ubuntu planning some work on an immutable version of their desktop distro. We have Red Hat abandoning the RPM format for LibreOffice in favor of Flatpak. We have a lot of stuff happening in the GNOME world, plus some more details about Mint 21.2 with touchpad gestures, some big improvements to Wayland with NVIDIA GPUs, and also no sponsor. Yeah, I'm sponsoring myself today because apparently I forgot to sell this video to any of my usual sponsors. So I'm just using this as a reminder that you can support the channel. There are plenty of links in the description below. And if you subscribe on Patreon or if you become a YouTube member, you'll get access to an exclusive weekly podcast about 20 to 30 minutes every Monday, where I talk about the channel, the sponsors I pick, the difficulties I encounter, the videos, how they work, did they work well, did they not work well, why, the personal projects I work on, and stuff like that. And you also get to vote on the topics I cover each month. So if you're interested, all the links are in the description and now let's get on with the video. So Ubuntu is going immutable. Well, at least they will offer an immutable variant of Ubuntu soon for the next Ubuntu LTS 24.04. So in a bit less than a year. Now don't worry, the current version that is a hybrid between dev packages and snaps will still be available. It's not being replaced. This new immutable variant will obviously not use flat packs, instead focusing on snaps, as you might expect. Now, Ubuntu already had an immutable distro called Ubuntu Core, but it was tailored for Internet of Things devices and all other non-desktop purposes. This new desktop immutable variant will be a complete equivalent to the current desktop Ubuntu. So you can expect a read-only base complete with snap apps that are installed for the user and don't need write permissions to the whole operating system, something that offers better security and also potentially better stability. There are no details yet on the model that they'll use if they will distribute image-based updates or something else, but it's still pretty interesting to see Ubuntu exploring this space. They've really been going all in on snaps lately, even packaging the COPS printing stack as a snap, and they plan to use it as the default in 23.10. And they also snapped some graphics drivers as well. And if I'm honest, snaps make a lot of sense for an immutable distro. If you can't install stuff using regular packages to your system, you might as well use a packaging format that works for command line interface apps and graphical apps. And that's the case for snaps and not so much for Flatpak. Now Red Hat announced this week that they would stop providing RPMs for LibreOffice in Red Hat Enterprise Linux in a future release. Matthias Klassen, a Red Hat employee and GNOME developer, said that the RPMs are now orphaned and that while they would still be maintained with security fixes in older still supported releases, going forward LibreOffice will be provided as a flat pack. They also said that this frees up a ton of resources for the team that worked on this package, which can now work on Wayland improvements, on HDR support, and on other improvements for workstation users. That change will probably also affect Fedora, unless a Fedora contributor decided to take the burden of maintaining RPMs for LibreOffice for Fedora. Jorge Castro also has a nice blog post explaining why this is for the best, as having many people building complex packages like LibreOffice or Firefox for multiple distros, all their supported versions, and backporting fixes to older versions is extremely inefficient and does not bring any advantage to the end user or even to the distro itself. The gist of it is packaging the same app over and over again is a waste of time and talent and letting app developers package their apps once with Flatpak, Snap, or whatever else is simply the way forward so distro maintainers can move on to more interesting and higher value things. And I couldn't agree more. Why would Red Hat as a company waste valuable time and resources maintaining a specific version of LibreOffice for their distro when the LibreOffice developers already do that with their Flatpak, which works on any distro and on any version without any work from Red Hat. Now let's talk about GNOME. And as part of the Google Summer of Code program, work has started on some interesting projects. The first one is called FlatSync, which is a new GNOME tool that would let users sync their installed Flatpaks between devices. Currently, if you want to ensure you have the same apps installed on your various computers, 
it's all manual. You get the list of Flatpak apps and you install what's missing on the other PC, or you write a custom script for it. FlatSync would make this automatic for users who want the feature, using a dbus daemon that lists all installed Flatpaks and pushes them to something like GitHub Gists, where the list can be read by another computer using FlatSync and all apps can be automatically added or removed when a change happens. Of course, a graphical app is planned to handle all of that. And the other Google Summer of Code project for GNOME is revamping the settings a bit with the creation of a system panel that would group multiple settings entries in a single subcategory, including the region and language settings, the date and time, users, remote desktop, and the about page, plus the system start option, something that I don't think exists currently in GNOME. And work has started on both these projects. And FlatSync will be very interesting for me because all my apps are flat packs on my desktop and on my laptop, both running Fedora. And I would love to be able to sync them up between computers so when I find a new one I like and I install it somewhere, it's automatically downloaded and installed on my other computer. It makes things a little bit easier. Now still on GNOME, it looks like there might be a hidden full light theme coming in GNOME 45. Right now, even if you pick the light theme over the dark mode, the GNOME shell will stay dark, with the top bar, the quick settings menu, the overview and apps grid still being dark, for added contrast and legibility. But for GNOME 45, it looks like there might be a hidden option in dconf that lets you enable this full light theme instead. The mixed dark shell and light apps mode we already have today will still be the default, and you will have to manually enable the new fully light mode if you want it. The background for the overview and the app grid will stay dark though, as this isn't as much a color preference as a legibility thing, to make sure the focus is on your virtual desktops or your apps. It's all still in development and the merge request for it has just been accepted in GNOME, and they want to refine it before it can become the default light theme for GNOME. And now I'm eagerly awaiting your EW light mode comments in the comment section below. Because yes, personally, I'm a light mode user. I like my eyes and dark mode when you have light shining on your screen, not good. Now on top of that, GNOME might get a redesigned UI for fractional scaling to let you preview the text size before choosing a scaling factor. It looks much like what macOS does, or at least what it did back when I used it on a laptop a long time ago. What's more interesting is that since fractional scaling is currently not visible by default on GNOME, the fact that there's work being done on how it looks might imply that the feature will get out of the experimental stage soon. They also added a legacy high DPI compatibility toggle, probably for X11 applications running on Wayland that don't follow the system scaling directly. Now it's just a mock-up for now, so it might never land, but GNOME has a good track record of implementing mockups from their design team, so I would be surprised if this didn't happen in a future GNOME release. And this makes me happy because it's 2023 and fractional scaling should be supported by everything, every desktop and every app. Let's not act like high DPI displays are a new thing. Now let's talk about Mint. Linux Mint 21.2 will release this month if everything goes well with the development cycle being now closed, which is a good indication that the beta is upon us. Mint 21.2 will bring Cinnamon 5.8, and one of the flagship features is touchpad and touchscreen gestures. As Clément Lefebvre, the lead developer of Mint, puts it, the gestures will be supported for window management, workspace management, tiling, and media controls, and they will work on touchpads, touchscreens, and tablets. Now, we don't know yet if these will be one-to-one -one gestures, as in the content moves with the movement of your fingers, or if there will be older style gestures where they are basically just like activating a keyboard shortcut and the animation happens all at once once you perform the gesture. My guess would be the latter as Mint is still on X11 and touchpad gestures on that display server have never been great, apart from Elementary OS. Now still, Mint 21.2 looks like a very interesting release, so you can expect a dedicated video about it on the channel as soon as they have a final release out. Now there's some work planned for Portals, the middleware that lets sandboxed Linux apps interact with the system without getting access to everything like the file chooser portal to let you pick a specific file or folder, or the screen sharing implementation on Wayland. 
While these portals are pretty complete and work really well, they're also a bit scattered between various desktops. Some have a complete implementation like GNOME or KDE, and some rely on the implementation of another desktop or a toolkit, which means that sometimes a sandboxed app will open a window that looks quite out of place, like a GTK file picker in a Qt app, for example. And soon there will be a mechanism for each desktop environment to state which implementation they want to use globally or per portal. For example, you could say you generally want the GTK implementation, but you could use your own for screenshots or screen sharing if you've developed something that fits your guidelines better. And of course, users could also tweak this config file to set their own preferences if they want. For example, someone using a window manager and not a desktop environment might want to use different implementations depending on what works best for them. It's really interesting work that will make basically zero difference for people using a regular DE because you generally already have a good portals implementation, but for people who like to customize things, use a window manager and tweak everything, having this option will be very cool. And let's finish this with the gaming news. First, we have a new beta driver for NVIDIA GPUs, which should improve Wayland support further, with a fix for a big issue on people using hybrid laptops with an AMD integrated GPU and an NVIDIA dedicated GPU, where you couldn't use hybrid graphics mode, basically. They also added support for the latest DMA buff Wayland protocol and plugged it for X Wayland as well, which will enable multi-GPU configurations and hybrid laptops to work much better on Wayland and generally should improve performance. It also gives a boost to Minecraft Java on an RTX 3000 series GPU and enables dynamic boost for older GPUs. And it adds more Vulkan extensions, especially for video decoding. Basically, it's a huge driver update for NVIDIA on Linux. And of course, it's still a beta, but generally these tend to make their way to the stable channel relatively quickly. So yeah, if you're an NVIDIA user on Linux, you can get excited now. And we also have the release of Wine 8.9 with an updated Mono engine to run .NET Windows apps on Linux and the PostScript driver being fully converted to the PE executable format. It now also supports Doppler Shift with the Direct Sound API and fixes 16 bugs, including for Need for Speed Underground, Battle.NET, FrameMaker 8 or the Silverlight plugin for some reason. Like, really? Does anyone use Wine to run a Windows web browser with the Silverlight plugin? No idea. But well, at least I didn't forget to sell this sponsor slot to our sponsor, Tuxedo. If you're a Linux user and you plan to replace your computer soon, stop looking at devices that come with Windows pre-installed. Buy something that you know will support Linux completely. And Tuxedo does just that. They have a big range of devices that should cover every need and every price point, whether you're looking for a laptop or a desktop, for something affordable or super powerful, for something for gaming or for work, they have everything. All devices are very customizable and all laptops are openable, repairable and upgradable, including the SSD, the battery, the RAM and sometimes even the wireless card. They're based in Germany, but they ship to most countries in the world. So if you're looking for a new computer and you plan to run Linux on it, click the link in the description below and get yourself a Tuxedo PC. They're really good. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like it, well, you can always dislike and tell me why in the comments as well. And as previously mentioned, you can support the channel by clicking on any of the links in the description below. You know how this works. So thanks everyone for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.